switch to IFB. But that's okay. It's primary night in Arizona. The campaigning is over. Now your voices will be heard. In the race for governor, a fight for the heart of the Republican Party between Carrie Lake and Karen Taylor Robeson. She's very good at um, getting the older vote. I have 30 years of experience in the private sector. But she can't reach the young people. I'm the candidate that can win in November. A crowded and hotly contested Republican Senate primary. We've worked harder than all the other candidates combined. I'm a fighter. The winner takes takes on Democrat Mark Kelly. It's so important uh, that your voice is heard. Our democracy is so much stronger. In a race that could determine control of Congress. Plus, the local races that impact your community. Tonight, the entire 12 News team ready to bring you the results and the reactions. Decision 2022. 12 News coverage of the Arizona primary begins now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for a special edition of 12 News. I'm Cuddy the Divine. And I'm Joe Dana. Election night is here, and we're going to bring you all of the latest with voting results as they come in. We start, though, our coverage with some breaking news out of Pinal County, where several precincts are reporting major issues with their ballot supplies. Team 12's Chase Golightly is reporting live with the details. And Chase, what do we know right now? 
Well, as of right now, we are told from Pinal County officials that about 20 different polling locations throughout the county either completely ran out of in-person ballots or they were close to it. And that includes this location of Four Peaks Elementary right behind me. In fact, the final two voters just walked out about 10 minutes ago saying that they're very frustrated with what they had to go to and they certainly aren't alone. We saw several people here in the last couple of hours walking out saying that they really just can't believe this happened and that it actually came to this to put into their vote in the primary. They said as soon as they walked in through those front doors, they were told by polling officials that there were no ballots to give. When I got here, I've been here. This is my fourth time being here. Wow. And, and finally get a ballot to sign. I would rather have too many that didn't get filled out than not enough because people just, you know, they give up too easy. Now, as to why this happened, Pinal County posted on its Twitter page that it was due to an unprecedented demand for in-person ballots. But again, all everyone that we spoke to today out here say that they aren't buying it. Now, Pinal County Supervisor, Supervisor Jeff Surdy with District 5 says to 12 News that he can't believe this happened. He's actually embarrassed that they ran out of in-person ballots. And he also added that there should be investigation. And if he finds out that hundreds of voters weren't able to vote because of this, he's not sure if they'll certify this election. Of course, a lot of details that they that we still need to comb through. Be sure to bring you the latest as we learn more. But for now, reporting live in Apache Junction, Chase Golightly, 12 News. Thanks, Chase. You can bet a lot of scrambling among leaders in that county right now. Meanwhile, Sky 12 up over a voting center earlier, about 6.30. This is Hayden and Indian School Road in Scottsdale. There were about a dozen people in line waiting to get inside to cast their ballots for the primary election. Meanwhile, in Maricopa County, an unexpected issue at some of the voting centers, stolen pens. Yeah, as we're learning, this issue is rooted in an all too familiar problem, election misinformation. Team 12's Jonathan McCall joins us from Glendale with the latest. Yeah, with the, we got a chance to uh, talk with the chairman of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, Bill Gates, who says that for the most part, things did go very smoothly today here in Maricopa County. More than 100,000 people showing up at the ballots today to cast uh, their votes. But one of the things that he really had some issues with, two reported cases of people stealing pins at polling sites, including this one where we are in Glendale across Maricopa County earlier today. I want to show you some video about how this all started. This started with a tweet from one of the candidates running for Board of Supervisors for District 2. That is Gail Col Golchik. And she's a Republican running for Maricopa County Supervisor District 2. Uh, in a tweet earlier today, she encouraged folks to not use the county-issued pins because she said the ink could be altered, allowing the county to change votes. Instead, she told folks to use blue ink instead. That prompted Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell to issue a cease and desist letter to Golchik. The letter said it was against to law to steal those pins and that the pins which are specifically recommended for election day and that removing them would have been seen as a deliberate attempt to tamper with an election. As we mentioned, we got a chance to talk with Chairman Bill Gates about that issue along with other conspiracy theories he's pushing back on as well on this election day. Here's what he had to say. It's really shocking to me uh, that someone would try and interfere with an election, a candidate, in this election would, would go about doing this and then amplifying it out on Twitter. Very disappointing. But unfortunately, this is the environment that we're dealing with right now. But as we, of right now sitting here, I feel very good about this election, how it's been run, and the fact that people have had now almost 100,000 people in Maricopa County were able to go to the polls today and vote for the candidate, the candidates that they support. That's what democracy is all about. very upset about his own party putting out those uh, negative and uh, those conspiracy theories and and those fa that false information and that is something he says that he is pushing back on he says is very reminiscent of Sharpie gate in 2020 that's when there were claims that Sharpie markers would not read the ballots here in Maricopa County obviously that was something that was debunked and never proven another big concern that chairman Gates says he will have for the rest of the night is the potential of security and possible violence 
violence that could uh, erupt as a result of some of the election results. In the last 30 minutes, 12 News has learned that the Maricopa County Elections Office has already received at least one threat made to the office over possible concerns of uh, the outcome of this election. We've reached out to the sheriff's office to see if they have been made aware and if they are investigating so far. We have yet to hear back. We'll continue to stay in contact with elections officials, the sheriff department, as well as uh, the board of supervisors to learn more about those potential threats and any other issues that could come up throughout the night. We're live tonight in Glendale. Jonathan McCall, 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much for that. We want to bring in Team 12 political insider Bram Resnick. And Bram, the polls closed at 7 o'clock, but it's going to be sort of a slow trickling of results here for the next several hours. Right, and we're seeing that happen right now. Uh, the state site is out of sync with the county site, so we really can't give you complete results the way we'd like to, but I'm sure we'll have them really, really soon. You know, tonight we should see the results from an estimated 75% of all ballots cast. The first statewide election results are being released right now and that will keep happening through the evening. Here in Maricopa County, they will represent the results all early ballots received and counted by Sunday. Later in the evening, we'll see results of ballots cast in person today. On Wednesday, we'll begin to see the results from early ballots returned Monday and today. This could go on all week. Now here's what we're watching for. Republican turnout today was very large. The results of those ballots will come in later this evening. So you could see leads changing hands in Republican primaries, close Republican primaries, over the next few hours and indeed possibly the next few days. On the Democratic side, Secretary of State Katie Hobbs might be able to declare victory in the primary for governor after this first ballot drop we're watching right now. Bigger picture. Arizona's primary is being watched nationally as a test of Donald Trump's hold on the Republican Party. All his endorsed candidates promote the falsehood that the 2020 election was stolen from Trump. That makes our primary a true test of our democracy. Polls indicate that Trump endorsed candidates are leading in the major statewide races, but as we like to say, the only poll that counts is on election day. All right, Bram, thank you. You'll be standing by with us for the next few right hours. Here. Yep telling us those results. So we'll check back in with you in just a few minutes. Yeah, taking a closer look at the top of the ticket, the crowded GOP field for Arizona Governor. Carrie Lake and Karen Taylor Robeson have led in the polls uh, on the Democratic side, a head-to-head -head showdown between Katie Hobbs and Marco Lopez. That's right. We have uh, Team 12 reporter Tram Eyes in the field with candidates uh, for both governor and the U.S. Senator all across Arizona. We're going to head now to Tram Eyes. She's reporting live at the Carrie Lake campaign in Scottsdale. Tram, has Carrie said anything to the crowd so yeah, far? Hey no, Joe, she has not, but I can tell you this crowd has been a very raucous crowd. There are hundreds of people here, at times cheering, at times booing, and there's people young and old. Some people even brought their own children, but this is a very excited crowd. Supporters were let in the door at about 6 o'clock, and then when the election party officially began at 7 o'clock, they started the election night with a prayer. Now, I talked to some of the people here, and even though they all believe that Carrie Lake will win this primary, however, some of them didn't think that actually it would be called tonight, though. They think that perhaps maybe that it will be called tomorrow. But again, anything goes this evening. It could be a landslide, or of course, it could be a very close race, and it could even be undecided. However, here's what some of her supporters said on why they want Carrie Lake for governor. What issues do you like that Carrie stands for? Well, the thing that really attracted me to her campaign to begin with is her, her strength on border, border control. Um, I, I believe our country needs to have strong borders. Her stance is incredible. I mean, it's more than I could ask for in any other candidate. And I, I think it's significant that her opponent has mirrored some of, some of her planks in terms of, you know, Funding, uh, fixing the wall, getting the rangers down there. Uh, Carrie's probably a little bit, I believe, more sincere in it. Um, and, you know, I like that. And what I really like about her is that she's willing to do that for her state without the backing of the federal government. Speaking of the younger generation, Andrew, you are just 12 years old. What is it that you like about Carrie? 
Well, Carrie, um, you know, we completely support her campaign, and the reason for that is uh, we believe that she's going to lower gas prices and definitely improve our school system because I just don't really like how uh, they're trying to import the critical race theory into the public schools, and that's why there's so very little teachers that are applying for the job is because for these certain reasons, and um, nobody really supports it anymore. So we just feel we have our total support on that, and um, that's, one of the re that's a couple of the reasons I'm supporting her. What particular issue stood out for you? Uh, you know, I'd say probably the biggest issue for me was the when they started locking everybody down for COVID. You know, I understand um, the concern and being cautious, but when you start shutting down businesses and you start, uh, you know, getting involved in people's lives, like on an intimate level, like in your house, the things that you can and can't do, obviously that's an encroachment on liberty. And, are there particular issues that really stood out? Yes, the, the wall. The border. wall, the border. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Election absolutely. Election integrity. Yes. We need that desperately. All right, back out here live at the Doubletree in Scottsdale. You can obviously see the crowd is very excited. I can tell you there are two big monitors towards the back here. And what they've been doing occasionally is that they've been showing the various local media and their reports from here because this whole entire row where I'm standing is packed full of media. And so they've been showing... Who is saying what about Carrie, even though, of course, you can't hear anything. But I can tell you that when, for instance, Karen Taylor Robeson was up on the big screen, you heard a lot of boos. When former Governor Jan Brewer, who, as we know, is supporting Karen Taylor Robeson, when she was up on the screen, we also heard a lot of boos. We just got word that the AP has called Katie Hobbs the winner of the Democratic nomination for governor. So now that that side has been decided, now it's our turn for governor on the gubernatorial Republican side. So again, this could be a very long night. There's no there's no telling. Um, I believe it just, you know, it boils down to that big first batch that we should be getting any moment now to see, to get a temperature check of really where it stands, whether or not um, Carrie Lake really is in the lead, has a strong lead, or if it really is neck and neck. But that's going to do it from here in Scottsdale. Tram, I, back to you. All right, Tram. She just mentioned Katie Hobbs, and of course she is the current Secretary of State, uh, now taking her chance at the seat of Governor of Arizona. We're going to toss it out live now to Colleen Sakura. She is there at the Katie Hobbs rally. Hey, K uh, Colleen. Yeah, good evening, guys. As you heard Tram mention, AP has called the race for current Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. Now she will be the Democratic nominee for governor. You can see folks here are starting to gather on stage in preparation for her to step on stage. Her twin sister, uh, Becky, is on stage now. We've heard from a few folks tonight, including uh, Supervisor Steve Gallardo, saying that Katie is the governor to lead Arizona uh, and expects that she will do well in the fall. Now, as we've talked with Katie, and especially in the last few weeks, as we've been preparing for the primary, she has said that her eyes have really been focused on the general election. And she believes that no matter who the Republican uh, nominee for governor is, that she can take them on. And so, uh, you know, Hobbs was up against business consultant and former Nogales Mayor Marco Lopez. Polls have continually shown that she's the not has is, was likely to be the nominee. And as we mentioned, AP has called it for her. Hobbs says that she's been, as I mentioned, keeping her eyes on the general election. She says that her legislative priorities are going to depend on the legislature that's elected. And she wants to address the water crisis, schools, and rising costs that Arizonans are paying, knowing, though, that the border will be a big piece of the general election, saying the other candidates aren't putting out plans that they can actually follow through as governor. I'm ready to take on whoever comes out of that primary, uh, and I think Arizonans are ready for someone who's going to um, be a real leader and tackle these issues on day one. Now, Hobbs has 
said that she's ready to take on either Carrie Lake or Karen Taylor Robeson in the general, saying both of them are out of touch with Arizonans and not offering actionable solutions. Now, again, we are expecting to hear Katie talk here soon. We were told a few minutes ago that we should expect her on stage here shortly. Uh, obviously, a lot of supporters there on stage here with, uh, re ready for her here at Crescent Ballroom in downtown Phoenix. Uh, you know, they've talked a lot about how just how she has handled the 2020 election as Secretary of State, uh, facing threats to her, facing uh, you know protesters outside of her home, and also battling conspiracy theories. She told us again today, you know, that uh, Arizona's elections are secure, that they are fair, and that as governor she would continue to fight for that as well. So um, obviously, the the results here tonight, um, a, a news that she expected. And so, uh, but yeah, we're just waiting here at the moment while, while we wait for her to join us on stage here now. Joan Tram. Colleen, I think you uh, made a good point there. Katie Hobbs over the last year and a half, she has had death threats. She has had to seriously consider what it is to be in this position as a public servant when, when people make those types of uh, threats to your life. And uh, so Katie Hobbs has stood tall and... Now she is poised to be the Democrat nominee. Um, I want to bring in Bram here, at least his voice. Not a big surprise as we see the crowd there that this has happened tonight. No, if I could be immodest for a second, I yeah. think I called it a few minutes ago. <laughs> it was going to be a big surprise if Katie Hobbs was not going to be able to declare victory after the first ballot drop, you're seeing it happen. And we've already had, how many votes have been have been counted? Uh, we have had 800,000 votes counted, and that is about, that's more than half of what are likely to be, I'm going to guesstimate more than half of what the number of votes that will be cast when all is said and done okay. sometime later this week. Oh. Okay, so there you see the results as they stand right now. Katie Hobbs at 75%, coasting through the Democratic primaries on her way to the general election. And right now, Aaron uh, Lieberman, who dropped out of the race uh, at some time ago there, uh, still managing to pick up 4.4% of the vote for the Democratic side for Arizona governor. All right, um, lifelong Republican uh, Karen Taylor Robeson has been spending millions of her own money to try to close the gap in the polls against Carrie Lake. Bianca Bono is joining us from the Robeson campaign rally. She has been there all afternoon long out at the Arizona Biltmore in Phoenix. Let's head out to Bianca and see what the Robeson campaign is saying tonight. Hi, Bianca. Hey guys, yeah, up until now you've seen me standing here with an empty ballroom behind me, but that has certainly changed because this really started off at about 7 o'clock tonight. Folks were kind of hanging out in the entryway, grabbing a drink, they were chatting, but things have certainly heated up in the past 15 minutes, and that's because of that 8 o'clock ballot drop. They are all gathered here watching the monitors very closely to see those results. And I can tell you that the Taylor Robeson camp is really expecting these results to lean in in their favor. Taylor Robeson spokesperson Matt Benson told me they believe many of their voters are early voters, so this is really going to be a critical mood setting moment here. But Benson said they've been tracking in person turnout today as well, and they believe that's also looking promising. He's ready to stop talking about all of those polls that show Taylor Robeson trailing because he says they don't matter anymore. Take a listen to what he had to say. The polls are all over the place. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, but the only poll that matters is the one that voters in this state are doing right now as we speak. I, I think what everybody is tracking is what does the turnout look like? Who's voting? Republicans, independents, what, is that, what does that makeup of the electorate look like? We feel good about the numbers we're seeing so far. More than that, we feel really good about the people who voted prior to today. The mail-in vote that will be the lion's share of this election tends to be very strongly our voters. And you're looking at former Governor Jan Brewer. She has been a very vocal supporter of Karen Taylor Robeson for quite some time now. We talked to her just a few minutes ago. We'll play a little bit of that interview later on. The one person who I have not seen 
is Karen Taylor Robeson. They just made an announcement for her. Maybe we'll see her come in soon. I did just see her father, Carl Kanasik, walk into the room. He, of course, is a former Senate president here in Arizona, where she may have learned uh, some of her uh, political goals from, and her brother, Andy Kanasik, as well. He was a Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. So uh, the room is starting to fill up. But again, we have not seen Karen Taylor Robeson just yet. Um, and really, again, all eyes are on those early numbers coming in, hoping that they are in Karen Taylor Robeson's favor. Her camp believes this could be a critical moment for the next several hours and the next few days, guys. All right, Bianca, uh, thanks a lot. Michael Doudna is live now from the Blake Masters campaign rally in Chandler. Yeah, Michael, uh, what's the message from the, it looks like Michael may not be with us yet. Oh, there, I think he dropped his mic. Okay, there he goes. All right, Michael, how is it looking out there in Chandler at the Blake Masters campaign rally? Yeah, guys, people are still very optimistic throughout this night. Of course, the early results show him with a slight early lead right now, and it's kind of following the entire path that we've seen from the Masters campaign. They're relatively confident that they're going to end up on top tonight. In fact, actually, uh, that they've been telling me is that they believe that they're just hoping this margin stays consistent throughout the night. Because unlike what you're kind of seeing with the governor's race, where they believe there may be two different type of voters out there, one for Karen Taylor Robeson and one for Carrie Lake, they believe there's the same type of voter that is going to go for both Jim Lehman and Blake Masters, because they have very similar platforms. They have a very similar campaign. They've been to the same events. So it's really who really gets the most of that average Republican voter in this primary. And that's what they're really looking for throughout tonight and to see if this margin continues to grow or at least stays the same. And if it does, well, they think it'll be a very happy night here. In fact, they're calling this a victory campaign. They even have a victory menu that they're trying to show folks uh, because they really do believe they're going to end up on top and end up facing Mark Kelly in November. All right, Michael, thank you so much. The first batch of results is just coming in, so let's get a look at some of those latest numbers with Bram. In the Republican primary for the U.S. Senate, Blake Masters building up an early lead, five points over businessman uh, Jim Lehman, Mark Brnovich in third place. Let's move on to our next race here. Arizona Secretary of State primary on the Democratic side. Former Maricopa County recorder Adrian Fontes with a seven-point lead over Democratic House leader Reginald Boulding. Arizona Secretary of State on the Republican side, Mark Fincham, an election denier who said he will not concede defeat. He was at the, he was at the Capitol the night before it was stormed and the day it was stormed. He is leading businessman Bo Lane. 35% to 27% a race to watch. Arizona Attorney General newcomer Abe Hamada leading that one with 29% of the vote. That's still up for grabs. Rodney Glassman in second at 24%. On to the Republican primary for superintendent of public instruction. Former superintendent Tom Horn wants his old job back. That might happen. He has a 40, he has 42% uh, of the vote. Sherry Sapir in second with 30%. State Treasurer and Kimberly Yee appears to be coasting to victory, leading with 57% of the vote. State Legislator Jeff Wenninger in second with about 26% of the vote. Corporation Commissioner, two of these candidates will advance, and it looks like Kevin Nicholas, Thompson. Nicholas Myers and Kevin Thompson have leads, but it is pretty close with Kim Owens in third there. Yeah. All right, so that's a lot of numbers there. Um, Obviously, anything what's standing out to you right now? I got my. I have my eyes on that Fincham Secretary of State race. Okay. Mark Fincham is the farthest right candidate when it comes to denying the vote. Secretary of State would be responsible for certifying the 2024 presidential election. The Secretary of State in Arizona is also first in line to the governor, should the governor leave office. It's a very important position that most folks have never had to think too hard about before tonight you do, given the political climate we are in right now. Uh, I, I noticed a political comeback of sorts with Tom Horn winning fairly easily. He was mired in scandal over the years. Uh, he's been a superintendent before. He was attorney general. Uh, two or three different uh, events in his political career that raised some eyebrows, but it appears he may be on his way again to uh, being the nominee. And I do want to go to the race, the Republican primary for governor. We have the numbers up here on our, our screen. Karen Taylor Robeson has 49% has of the vote. Carrie Lake has 40% of the vote. Are you surprised by that? Not necessarily, although the margin is pretty wide. But remember what I said earlier, that yeah. you could see leads changing hands. Okay. Uh, 
Katie Hobbs is about to speak at presume, and presumably declare victory. Let's go to that right now. Well, it looks like we're uh, not quite there yet. She's at the Crescent Ballroom. In she's at now, I am absolutely amazed to see how far she's come. I can't even remember a time before she got involved in politics and has actively worked to make the community around her a better and brighter place to be. It is amazing to see the leap from just a few people going door to door asking for people to listen and to help her make a change to everyone here standing with her and supporting her now. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-two days from today marks 12 years since my mom's first primary election. I was in the fifth grade at the time. I wasn't old enough to go to events like this, but I'll always remember her practicing her stump speech in the car when she would pick my sister and I up from school. I remember how nervous she was on that first election day, and it's incredibly inspiring to see how far she's come since then. I learned a lot that day, and a lot in the following years to come. Most importantly, that the best things in life are on the other side of fear, and that anything is possible if you work hard enough towards it. Without further ado, I'm proud to introduce the next governor of Arizona, my mom, Katie Hobbs. than spreading conspiracy theories about the last one. <laughs> to be clear, the 2020 election was very important, but this one is even bigger. Yes, yes, yes. In 2020, the foundation of our democracy faced the most serious challenge of our lifetime, with false accusations of fraud, que questions about our election systems that we had in place, and leaders who oversaw them. There were threats against me, against my children, and against my family. Even armed protesters outside my home. They were doing this because as Secretary of State, I had the audacity to uphold our Constitution yes. and administer our elections with integrity. The people who lost have continued to show us they will do anything to overturn the results, including running for governor. <laughs> yeah, yes. When you're attacked, you don't just have to choose between giving in and fighting back. There's another option, to get the job done. And that's exactly what we did when we conducted the safest and most secure election in Arizona history. <laughs> Getting the job done. It's what I've always done, and it's what we need right now in Arizona. 
That's why I'm running for governor. Because the people threatening our democracy, our state, and our personal freedoms aren't just banging at my door. They're banging at Arizona's door to take over our state and any sense of normalcy that we have left. I can say this unequivocally as the Secretary of State. It's time to move on from the 2020 election. It's time to tackle the real challenges we have before us today, like rising costs, Arizona's water crisis, our failing education system, attacks on women's freedoms, and the skyrocketing cost of housing. We need leaders who will look to the future, not conspiracies of the past. Yes. Leaders who are doers, not whiners. Do you want a governor whose entire platform boils down to being a sore loser? Or a governor who will get the job done for Arizona? <laughs> Getting the job done. Let's talk about what that means because our problems are urgent and they are decades in the making. Tonight, I'm announcing that we're kicking off the general election with the Solutions Can't Wait Tour. We're going to every corner of the state to talk about the problems politicians have ignored for too long and talk about our plans to deliver results where others have either failed or not tried at all. No more passing the buck, no more pointing fingers, we need a governor tough enough to tackle our biggest challenges. Yeah, the yeah. Solutions Can't Wait Tour isn't going to shy away from our most daunting problems. We're going to talk about our accountable Arizona plan to bring trust and transparency back to government. Yes. We're going to talk about our affordable Arizona plan to lower costs for families. We're going to talk about fixing our schools, securing the border, addressing our water crisis, and so many more problems that have been kicked down the road time and time again. I'm no stranger to tackling tough challenges. Woo! I'm a yes. social worker. My first job out of college was working with homeless youth in Phoenix. And then I helped manage one of uh, the largest domestic violence shelters. All right, and you were listening to Katie Hobbs there addressing her very excited campaign rally there. She has now secured her shot at going for the seat of governor of Arizona on the Democratic ticket. Uh, she'll be set to go move on to the November general election um, on the 8th of November. So uh, she's giving her speech there. We'll check in a little bit later on with her as we continue our coverage. But Bram, you have some new numbers coming in. That's right. On the Republican primary for governor, Karen Taylor Robeson is leading Kerry Lake by nine points and that's with about half of all ballots counted statewide. We don't know exactly where these ballots are coming from, except that the bulk are from Mar Maricopa County, where Karen Taylor Robeson has big, built up a big lead. A race to watch, as I said earlier, the lead could change as ballots come in from outlying counties where Cary Lake may have an edge. All right. All right, Bram, thank you so much. And, of course, uh, keep it right here on... We've got some other results as well coming in. We want to show you a few that we're getting right now. Um, let's go to U.S. Senate GOP side. As we mentioned, Blake Masters up about four percentage points over Jim Lehman. Lehman's still right there, but uh, Masters in the lead. And for the race for Secretary of State of Arizona, these are the Democrats. Adrian Fontes right now bringing in nearly 53% of the vote. He is leading Reginald Bolden, who has 47% of the vote. And on the GOP side for Arizona Secretary of State, Mark Fincham, uh, right at about 35%. He is up against who is considered more moderate, Bo Lane, at 27%. And you can keep following all the results live at 12news.com slash elections. And then you'll want to join us again at 9 in just about 25 minutes on 12 News. We're going to have a full hour of special live coverage as Arizona voters make their voices heard. And thanks so much for putting your trust in us. And of course, we'll see you back here in about 25 minutes on the air and online.